there are two small screws that screw in here and they both hold it in position and they will adjust the vertical alignment of the images. Now I'll get this prism looking square to the front of the rangefinder to start off with and then we'll make our adjustments from that point. That yeah, looks okay. So the arm. Well, we've got a bush in the arm. Now that's a split bush, so although it's probably circular, it's probably a little bit like an eccentric because of the split. I always put a scribe on there so that I scribe line so I can put it back exactly the place it came from. And I'll always remove it with the arm in the infinity position. In other words, with the arm back against the rangefinder body. And here I'm just removing traces of old grease that are on there. And I'll have to clean the bush in the same way to remove traces of old grease. The old grease often having dried out and become sticky. I'll clean the wavy washer in the same way, bit of naphtha and that's just to make sure that all the old grease is off and the screw, because the screw head also needs to be cleaned. That only leaves the glass surface on this lens to be cleaned so I'll clean that with some window cleaner that surface and this surface as usual it's easier to judge the outside surface from reflections and once that's clean you can you're in a better position to judge the state of the inside surface which is harder to see some molybdenum paste I just wipe a little bit around the inside there and wipe that surface you don't need much. Now the bush can go back on there, making sure I get my little alignment mark in the right place. And we're ready to reassemble the rangefinder. This little piece here is the bush that the screw screws into. It runs in a slot in the base here, so it's adjustable for position. If I'd been wiser, I would have marked the position of the screw before I took it apart, but today I didn't. You must be distracting me. So we'll just put it back in the middle. I'm supporting that on the tip of the screwdriver, so it won't fall in. Put the arm in place. A little wipe of molybdenum paste around the bush at the top there because that's where the wavy washer is going to run. Put the wavy washer in position. And the screw. Get that screw started in the bush. Is it going in? I think it is. And run that screw up. I'll just set this in the middle of its range because I didn't mark it beforehand and we'll start from there. So 
about there. And I'll put the pin through here, through the spring. Stretch that out and drop the pin into the notch at the back of the rangefinder. Just check that's moving freely, and it is. My moving image is very high, so I've got to slightly slacken the screw at the front of the prism and tighten the one at the rear. Now it's just slightly high, a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Very small movements here make a big difference to the image. That's pretty good. If anything, it's a bit low now. And my horizontal adjustment is well out. Much more than I would normally expect. So I'm going to shift the position of the front group here across, see if that improves things. It did. So I'm just going to slacken that screw off slightly, push the front group here across a little bit, check that. Oh, we've gone the wrong way now. Where it is just at the moment is just about spot on. So I'm going to stop right there, put a touch of lacquer top and bottom of that range finder to lock that front group in so it can't move. then I'm ready to do my final adjustments after that. Well, not exactly final. Final adjustments once this is on the camera, but I've got a little bit more work to do here first. Just making sure that everything centers up correctly. So I've bitten a slot at that side. I'm on that side. Just check the image out the window again. That's very good. And I'm just checking for alignment. Now the rangefinder comes back to past the infinity position. So if I wind in the stop slightly here, so the image gum only comes back to infinity, we should be in business. A little bit more. And I notice this screw is loose, so I'm going to put a touch of lacquer on that in a minute. That's good. The image may be slightly low. The moving image may be slightly low. Let's see if I can get that to move a little bit. The vertical alignment can shift when you get this back on the camera depending on how the arm of the rangefinder is being held. That seems very good. The image is uh, nice and sharp. The image doesn't shift as I move my eye from one side of the rangefinder to the other, which means that I've got things pretty much in the right place. 
Now I'm just see a thread of some lacquer or something across the front there. That must have come off the yeah. That must have come off the uh, toothpick when I was putting the lacquer on there. That's okay. Well that rangefinder is very good and that's ready to go back on the camera body. I'll put a wipe of molybdenum on the cam on the front of that rangefinder where it couples to the camera. I'm going to put a couple of spots of uh, lacquer on the body where the rangefinder sits so that once the screws are tight it has no tendency to shift even if the camera receives a thump. We'll check the infinity focus, the infinity focus is set to infinity and put the two screws back in place. Of course I've got to check that the infinity focus is correct on the camera lens because I've uh, just guessed that at the moment based on the marks that I saw present. So I'll check that. Once I'm happy the lens is correctly focused then we'll be in a position to think about making sure that the rangefinder is correctly focused. Well, Lady Luck was with me today because the focus at the lens is absolutely spot on. So that mark that I saw, that I assumed it was probably from the screw head, was from the screw head. So I've got to adjust my rangefinder position now. The horizontal alignment is not correct. I'll just loosen up that lock screw. work out which way I need to go. I need to move the arm inwards because it, the images converge at infinity before the focus scale is moved as far as infinity. I have just overshot very very slightly. These adjustments are all very subtle. Only a little bit of toing and froing was required, but um, the rangefinder is working well. Nice and accurate, nice and clean, good to look through. Couldn't be better. So, what does that leave? Well, we've got the exposure meter. And the exposure meter appears to be good and working. Looks clean. I've already checked, I've already taken the top off to make sure there were no loose screws or that nothing had fallen in because the glass cover is missing. I don't have any cover slips of glass for that but I'm going to cut one out of plastic and glue that on there and it's just to keep the dust out and any other stray particles you don't want so I'll go and find something. Well I've got that meter ready to go back on. So we'll, what do I need to do? Oh yes let's put that back on first. So the film release button, that needs to go on before the meter. A quick wipe of molybdenum paste through there. Take the film release button, get that on there. Now the shutter release is trying to get away there, so I've got to make sure that's sitting correctly. It is.
take our meter one screw on this side and one screw over here which is only a little bit awkward to get at put our shutter release button on the top blow off any dust check for thumbprints on the glass Let's give that rear viewfinder an extra clean. That's better. And where's the top cover? The top cover is cleaned and ready to go. Let's put it in place. I'm checking the frame counter now to make sure it counts one frame and no more. It does. And it's bang on. So I must have got the cocking rack back in exactly the right spot. Two chrome plated screws in the top plate. Top cover's not sitting down correctly, that's better. And a single chrome screw on the end of the top cover. And the chrome screw actually goes into the exposure meter housing at that end. Is our top cover. Now our three wind knob. And that had a, a spacer washer underneath it. Occasionally that's the case, it's to stop the knob from rubbing on the top cover. As it revolves, it just provides a very tiny amount of space there. That's the top of our camera dealt with, but the bottom, we need to deal with this lack of leatherette problem. What have I got? Well, I have a piece of leatherette. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. I think that'll do, our, do the job for us. I've got a cleaner. This has been recovered from some uh, train wreck of a camera, possibly one that came to me for parts and wasn't even vaguely complete. I've got to scrape this old glue off the base of this. And then I want to see if I can flatten this leatherette to get it to sit very flat. And if I can do that, that'll make a great replacement for the missing leatherette in this case. And all I'm left to do after that is find a leatherette or create a patch for the film advance knob. I think I've got all the other components I need. I can see all the screws I need in front of me. The uh, back catch cover and so forth are there. So I'm on the home straight. It's lunchtime now, time to stop. Alright, this has been cleaned and I've pressed it and uh, it's looking nice and flat now. I think it'll lie flat on the camera so I'm going to glue that back. So, first the adhesive. I 
the adhesive I have to get a good cover on here but I don't want it getting on the face of the leatherette some of these early leatherettes in particular I don't know well they probably differed in their the type of plastic that they used and some of them are more sensitive to solvent than others Yeah, I've been a bit generous with putting this on here. The leatherette's quite stiff. It could be awkward getting this to sit down flat and flush. Still, the proof of the pudding will be in the eating. Put this on the camera body and see what we get. Well, yes, it's reluctant to lie down flat, okay. Leatherettes, as they dry, they shrink. That means that they're reluctant to sit flat around raised bosses like this around the uh, rewind knob or around the central boss here. So I've got to make sure that that leatherette is seated as flat as possible there because it wants to lift up. It's not sitting particularly well in the recess of the body here at the bottom. But it looks considerably better than no leatherette at all. Now this leatherette, whoever, whatever cameras had come off, somebody had peeled it back just far enough to get this plate off the camera they were working on. As a result, there was like a, a fold in the leatherette at that point. That fold is uh, still fairly prominent and there's no danger of making that go away entirely. When this is fully dried, I'll rub a bit of wax into it. It'll probably improve the appearance. But um, it's not out of place with the rest of the camera. Uh, I think that'll, that'll be fine. If you need to lift leatherette in order to get to part of something, if you possibly can, it's always best to remove it completely. Otherwise you end up with this business. You end up with a fold in it or a crease. Um, even if this had been on the camera all the time and had been peeled back and then glued back, just the loose piece had been glued back, you always end up with a line where you've folded it back. That's just inevitable. So I'll put the film advance lever back on the camera. Where's the third screw? I was just busy saying that I haven't lost any screws. Now I can't find it. I'll find it. It was there all along, I just didn't have my eyes open. And the back catch cover. So we'll get this together. 
is always entertaining to fit. Sometimes it goes very smoothly, other times it's a struggle. Trying to get the spring, the screw, and the two major components holding themselves together while you lower it into position without disturbing anything is a uh, challenge. Let's get that in. That is not running smoothly. Um, find out why in a second. It's rubbing on the button. It is rubbing on the button. Pull this up slightly. That's better. Okay, so there's our leatherette. There's everything in place now except for the patch for our advanced lever. So I better find that. Well, I've got a range a patch here. Now this isn't actually leatherette. This is leather, but it's quite a good uh, quite a good match for pattern, and it'll certainly do the job. I don't have any leatherette patches, and the only way I could generate a leatherette patch would be to take a larger piece of leatherette of the right pattern and cut the patch from it. One of the problems with cutting patches from old leatherette is, of course, that the old leatherette is often dry and hard and brittle. And so it's much more interested in fracturing into little tiny pieces than it is in cutting neatly. Well, there we have it. That's the last piece of the puzzle. The camera is complete. Winds and fires nicely. The exposure meter works, range finders accurate. It sets self timer. That's running nicely. The front opens and closes which is an advantage because there was no danger it was going to before until I was able to twist that very twisted door back into shape and straighten the arms of course too. So that's quite a good result but what was the cost in terms of parts? Well here we have the um, retard gear train as it was in the camera and all its various pieces. That's obviously had to replace that as a unit. That was just shot. The little window on the inside here on the meter itself, that had gone. So had to replace that. Then the shutter. The little bracket here that holds the main drive spring, that had been broken. So I had to replace that. On the base of the camera I had to replace the leatherette, that was entirely missing, and replace the patch on the film advanced lever because that was entirely missing. Apart from that, I don't think there were any other parts involved. I was quite surprised I wasn't even missing any of the springs. But it's a good result. Of course I have to uh, do a bit of panel beating on that accessory shoe at the top there and to a smaller degree on the top cover itself. The camera itself is quite a tidy example. There's a bit of missing paint around the place like here given the state of that um, door. I don't think that's a terrible problem. But this one can go back where it came from now. I'm sure the owner will be pleased to see it back and uh, 
they'd probably be a bit surprised actually that it's coming back as a working camera given the state of what it was like when it first arrived here. Thanks for watching.